now we can go back and look at projectile motion. We said, so when we are using Newtonian mechanics, we get that the time it takes for the goal to go from here to here is the same as the time it takes for a goal to go from there to here. In fact, if you just look at two different types, the time for the goal to go from here to here and here to here will be the same. This is because the energy of the ball is conserved when there's no air resistance. When energy is conserved, the only thing changing the kinetic energy or the only thing changing the potential energy is the height of the ball. If the ball are at the same height, they will have the same speed. So the distance so the time it takes to go from here to here is the distance divided by the speed. So when they are here and here, the speed is, is the same. When they are a little bit higher, the speed is still the same as long as the height is the same. So the time it takes to travel the same amount of distance will be the same. This symmetry comes from energy conservation because the only thing affecting the speed of the ball is its height. Even though it is going up and here it is going down, the speed will be the same as long as the height is the same. So if you look at the time it takes from one height to another height and then back to the same height, the time will be the same. Okay? To pull it, you end up only need to use half of the cord to pull it up because there are two strings pulling it. But in order to move it up for a high edge, you need to pull it down for a high to edge. This is because if you move the height of the block upward, the change of potential energy is the same for both blocks. This change of potential energy or this increase of potential energy comes from the work you've done to the system and it, your, the work you've done is not gravity so it's not conservative. The work done by non-conservative force can input energy to the system. It doesn't always need to be air resistant. So in this case, you are inputting energy to the system by doing work as pulling the string by using a force times a displacement h. They are in the same direction, so it is a positive work. And now, if you want to pull the block up with a lower force, then you must double the distance you pull in order to increase the same amount of energy. The reason that you need to pull down by twice the distance is because 
you need to do work to increase energy. And work is force times displacement. If you want to use a smaller force, the displacement must be bigger in order to increase the same amount of energy. So that's why if you decide anything that reduces the force you need, the distance you need to pull must be longer. This energy conservation. So if your dream is to design a pulley system that reduces force but does not increase the length, give up right now because it's impossible due to energy conservation. particles, they are all moving, they are having speed d1, d2, this is my system until the uh, particle in it. Then the total kinetic energy of the system is literally just the sum of all the particles and the energy. Now, this formula isn't, isn't really helpful because uh, we need to figure out the speed of all the particles. For a system, we want to look at the center of mass, right? Therefore, we want to decompose the speed or the velocity of a particle, let's say the first particle, into the velocity of the center of mass plus the relative velocity of the first particle to the center of mass. This is the velocity of the first particle relative to the center of mass. It is just defined this way. You can move it, you can move the center of mass to the other side then the relative velocity between the first particle and the center of mass is just the first particle's velocity minus the center of mass velocity. You've done it in your homework for vector addition. It's just defined this way. This relative velocity will also be the velocity of the first particle in the center of mass frame. So if the center of mass is at here, and the first particle is at here, and they are moving together, then even though the first particle has velocity, the center of mass will not see it moving rapidly. So that's the relative velocity of the first particle to the center of mass. We want center of mass because it's easy to tell the center of mass of a system. And when the block is moving, we know the center of mass is moving up, but we might not know what exactly the particle in the flux is doing. So we want the center of mass velocity. So, for kinetic energy, we 
we need one half mv squared. A square of a vector is defined as the dot product of a vector to itself. Does that make sense? You multiply itself with itself. So you have vx, vx plus vy, vy, and you get vx squared, vy squared plus the square of the speed. So that's why when I say the square of the speed, I can also say velocity squared because they, they have to be the same thing. Velocity squared is velocity dot velocity, and speed squared is going to be the same as velocity dot velocity. So that's what we need for kinetic energy. The problem is that I want to write it in terms of Alright, so let me just write it as v1 squared. I want to write it in terms of the velocity of the center of mass plus the velocity of the first particle relative to the center of mass squared. So how do I square a vector? It's going to be exactly the same as binomial distribute, uh, expansion. You square the first term, and then there will be two cross terms. But for a cross term, it's not a square because it's different vectors. That in vector multiplication, it becomes the dot product between the two vectors. Then the last one will be the square of the other vector. Does it make sense? You can try to check it by yourself if you are interested. I have the uh, detailed process in the textbook. But if you know binomial distribution, uh, binomial expansion, then it's just exactly the same. The only 